Recently, there has been a lot of negativity towards Chiori and her place in the current meta, but after doing a lot of theory crafting and playtesting for different Chiori teams, I can confidently say her value is a lot higher now than ever, which is the opposite of what most people are saying. There's quite a few strong teams that Chiori is really good option in, in this video, I'll go over most of them, and also give some brief guide information on Chiori such as how to build her, what your priority should be for vertical investment, and so on and so forth. Before diving into the teams, there are some strengths that Chiori has, which not everyone knows about. I'll briefly go over those before covering the teams, as this will help to better understand Chiori's value in those teams. Firstly, Chiori actually frontloads a good portion of her damage. Her first puppet hits happen as soon as you cast her skill, so that's one puppet hit, or two if you have a Construct or C1. And there's damage from casting Cherry's skill as well, plus her two A1 hits, and her burst if used. That's actually about half, if not more than half, of her damage. As an example, C0 Cherry on Harbinger of Darn, with no buffs other than Shilonin's Rest Shred, the Scroll Set, and Gia Resonance, Cherry's total damage per rotation is about 320,000, and the front-loaded portion of that damage happens within just the first few seconds, which, and it's about 228,000, which is 70% of her damage. If she doesn't burst there, her total damage is about 240,000, with 151,000 of it front-loaded, about 60% of her damage. And also to get an idea of how much she can front-load with some amount of vertical investment, in this same scenario, a C1 Auron Cherry using her burst would front load about 320,000 damage, with her total damage being about 580,000, so that's still more than half of her damage being front loaded. Having high front loaded damage like this is very good, because it can result in taking out a wave of enemies or a phase of a boss much faster than otherwise. If you have enough damage to run rotate content, the more damage you front load, the faster your clear is going to be. And the next strength I want to mention is, Chiori's fill time is extremely low. With the way she can swap to the next character in the party automatically with her skill, Chiori can get around the 1 second swap cooldown. This makes her the only character in the game that can be on field for less than a second at a time. This is fantastic, because it makes rotation setups with her extremely fast, faster than they would likely be with anyone else on the team. Her field time is longer if you cast her a burst, but she is doing a good amount of damage in that field time, so it's a lot better than taking long field time on a support that isn't doing any damage in that time. With those two strengths understood, let's now look into teams for Chiori. Since Chiori is a Geo unit, you really do want to have a second Geo on the team, as this will increase her damage by a lot with the resistance shred from Resonance, and also give a decent buff to your on-fielder from the Geo Resonance damage bonus. This makes Cherry fantastic with Shilonin. Shilonin is essentially a Geo Kazo as far as buffing goes, so she buffs Cherry's damage by a lot, while also buffing anyone else on the team as well. Adding onto the synergy, if Shilonin nor Cherry needs to use their burst in a rotation, the combined field time between the two of them is only two and a half seconds. So with these two paired together, you get both great buffing to Chiori and your main DPS, great sub-DPS on Chiori with more than half of it front-loaded, and an extremely fast rotation setup. This is very good for any team that can afford to fit them both in. On top of that, both of these units have great vertical scaling, with Shilonin's C2 and weapon greatly improving her buffing, and Chiori's constellation and weapon both vastly improving her damage. In particular, taking Cherry from C0 to C1 will increase her damage by nearly 50%, which translates to around a 10% increase in overall DPS for most teams. So this gives any team using these two a great avenue for radical investment that you can carry over to many other teams. So what teams will this work well with? The biggest one I have found is a Vaporized Nouvellet team, with Nouvellet, Shrunkling, Shilonin, and Cherry. Typically, Kazuha would be here instead of Chiori. Nuvlet's personal damage is going to be higher with Kazuha, as you'll be getting 3 stacks of his passive instead of 2, plus Kazuha's buffing. But, Kazuha's buff does not have great uptime in this team, and even at C0 R0, Chiori's personal damage is high enough to mostly make up for the personal damage lost on Nuvlet. And the rotation is a bit shorter with faster setup. 
Because of that, the overall DPS with Chiori is equivalent to using Kazuha. With the resistance shred from Far Piece VV, this does not reapply in multi-wave, so you'll actually be doing more DPS with Chiori than Kazuha in multi-wave content. There are still further advantages Chiori has here. If your Nuvolet is C0, the crystallized shards Chiori will create can help prevent Nuvolet from getting staggered. And if your Nuvolet is C1, the damage and DPS even with C0 Chiori is just straight up higher than using Kazuha, since it would have 3 Nuvolet stacks, and Kazuha team doesn't get a damage increase from Nuvolet C1 since it's already at 3 stacks. So overall, I actually believe this to be Nuvolet's current strongest team if you don't have Farina constellations. But even if you play a team like Nuvolet, Shilon, and Kazuha Farina with a C1 Farina, Chiori's constellations are so strong that the Vaporize team with C1 Chiori is still equivalent in DPS. And using this team instead of Farina does free up Farina for another team, which can be very valuable depending on the account. The next character I found Chiori to be excellent with is Linny, in a team of Linny, Bennett, Shilon, and Chiori. Chiori only applies Geo about once every 3.6 seconds due to her ICD, so she is seldom, if ever, removing Pyro Aura, thus allowing Linny to still get his huge damage bonus buff. The longest cooldown on this team is only 16 seconds, so with how fast the setup time is, Linny can perform a short 16 to 17 second long rotations here. And this, along with the other strengths we already know of with the Sh Chiori and Shilon in duo, results in this actually being equivalent in DPS to Vaporize Linny teams where he's vaporizing his damage off of Farina's Hydro application. Vaporize Linny is also a team that can be difficult to play, as sustaining Hydro Aura can be finicky if you aren't careful, but Linny has no re interruption resistance there, whereas here you at least have Crystal Eyes. It is important, however, to note that Vaporize teams with Linny have much higher damage per rotation, and since Linny is Vaporizing there, his front-loaded damage is quite a fair bit higher there as well. So for more try-hard and speedrunning type of gameplay, until you have some vertical investment into the double geo team such as C1, R1, Chiori, Vaporized may clear faster. But for a lot of players, double geo is going to be a lot more reliable and consistent while still being very strong. For Linny, you can also use Zhongli instead of Shilonin here. Zhongli's buffing is much lower than Shilonin's, so it is quite a bit weaker, but it's respectfully strong for a fully shielded team. Do also keep in mind though that with Shangli you already have a construct, so Chiri C1 won't be increasing her damage here, thus it's going to be very weak compared to using Shilonin at that point. Another character I find this really good for is Mualani. With a team of Mualani, Shilonin, Chiri, Zhongling, you have to give up buffing from Hydra Resonance, Candice, or Mona, and Instructors on Mualani in order for Chiri to fit in here but her personal damage is high enough to make up for most of that. For more tryhard and speedrun type of gameplay, it is probably going to be faster in most scenarios to focus all in on Mualani's personal damage, but with Chiori, you don't have to rely 100% on Mualani's own damage, which can make her much more forgiving to play. This is especially true the more investment you have into Chiori, as it is very hard to mess up Chiori's damage contribution, and her damage does skyrocket with investment. Alichino is another character that can get nice use out of Chiori. A funny thing I discovered with Chiori plus Yulonen though is, with Alichino, the setup time is so fast, it's actually being held back here, as Alichino needs at least 5 seconds to finish harvesting her blood debt. And the setup time with Shilonen E2, Bennett Q, Chiori EE, that's less than those 5 seconds. Because of that, you have to do things you otherwise wouldn't with Alicino, such as casting Bennett's skill just to fill up that time. Casting Cherry's Barst does also fill up that time and fix the issue, but you likely won't have enough energy for it every rotation. So, I recommend on one rotation to do Cherry's Barst, then skip poor Barst but do Bennett's skill instead on the next. On rotations where Bennett's skill is used, you may need to wait like a quarter of a second before using Alicino's charged attack though, so just keep that in mind. Nonetheless, this is a solid team for Alicino. It has equivalent DPS to using Vaporize with Kazuha and the Elon, though without the grouping. Keep in mind with that DPS though, spreadsheet calcs use averaged damage, which makes it very hard to properly account for how much damage Alicino front loads with Vaporize while her Bond of Life is high. 
So in practice, the vaporized team may clear faster most of the time. This may change, however, if your Alicino is at C2, because at C2, Alicino no longer needs to wait for a blood tat to harvest, so you can fully take advantage of how fast the setup time is with Shiori and Shilonin. Having some vertical investment on Shiori, such as her C1 and weapon, can also help make up for not having that vaporized damage. Now, just like with Lenny, you can also use Zhongli instead of Shilonin with Alicino here. Alicino's damage will be notably lower, but Shiori's damage will actually remain about the same since she gains a second doll. And with the, ro the rotation time is shorter because you'll never need to heal with Alicino's Barst when you have Zhongli's shield. My calcs do assume that other Alicino teams use her Barst, so the difference in rotation length results in the Zhongli on paper actually being higher DPS than Shilonin here. But in practice, if you don't need Alicino's Barst without the shield, Shilonin will certainly be better. Also keep in mind once again that Shiori's damage won't go up from her C1 with Zhongli instead of Shilonin. So if you have C1 Shiori, you're really going to want to be using Shilonin here and not Zhongli. Another character that Shiori works great with is Navia. Now unfortunately, due to the way that Shilonin works, you can't use both Shiori and Shilonin with Navia here. So Navia's team is Navia, Bennett, Farina, and Chiori or Shilonin. I know a lot of players believe that Shilonin is just simply better than Chiori here, and if comparing Shilonin and Chiori at equal investment, unless it's C4 or higher, I do believe that will be true for most players, but for my testing and calculations, it's very close. So Chiori is still the next best option for Navia, and isn't far behind at all. Even for Navia players that have Shilonin, having Chiori can still be very good value, as it would allow Shilonin to be used on the other team at the same time. Now, one Geo DPS that Shiori is always best in slot with is Noel. Ideally, the team should be Noel, Kachina, Chiori, Farina. Shiori does have really good sub DPS damage here, as she is getting two dolls thanks to Chir Kachina's construct, and the scroll buff from Kachina as well, and Farina's damage bonus buff. And if you do get a C2 Shilonin, that will allow her to be used here instead of Kachina for way more damage, and Chiri will also be able to get a huge increase from her C1 as well. This gives Noelle a pretty high ceiling for a 4 star DPS, since Chiri's constellations even after C1 will continue to be huge increases. With enough investment, Chiri will eventually start doing more damage than Noelle on this team, even as her sub DPS, but Noelle will still be contributing very well here by doing good AoE damage and healing for fanfare. Chiori is also always best in slot with Niguang, with an ideal team of Niguang, Chiori, Farina, Bennett. Shilonin will be used instead of Farina if Shilonin is at C2. Then this team, Chiori's damage is actually higher than Niguang's, even if you put Chiori on a 4 star weapon and Niguang on a 5 star, their damage will be basically the same. And while Ch if Chiori has her weapon and Niguang a 4 star, Chiori's damage is just going to be way higher than Niguang's. Since Chiri's damage is so high here, trying to play Ningguang as the hyper carry with Shilon in instead of Chiri just does not work well at all. As you can see, the damage and DPS of the team just falls off tremendously without Chiri there as a sub DPS. But with Chiri on Ningguang's team, it's actually a pretty strong team. And for the less Geo DPS, Ito, Chiri is of course also great with him, with a typical mono Geo team of Shangli, Ito, Chiri, Goro. Now this team is outdated by modern day standards, so it's not a great team by any means, but once you get Shilonin to C2, you'll definitely start using Kar here with a team of Ito, Shilonin, Chiori, and in the fourth slot, there's currently not an ideal Pyro, Hydro, Electro, or Cryo unit for the slot, but the best option will be Bennett for now. Since Bennett has no off-field application, you'll only get a couple of crystallized shards, so if they break early, you may not get the resistance shard from Geo Resonance on every wave of enemies and multi-wave content. But nonetheless, this is a pretty strong team, and it will be Ito's best team with a C2 Shilonin. Do keep in mind that Ito already has a construct, so if, unless you plan to go to C2 or higher on Chiori, or plan to use her in other teams as well, there's no need to get her C1 here. Getting Shilonin to C2 should be your priority instead. And that covers the main teams I recommend Chiri for, but once you have enough vertical investment, I'd say C1 R1 Chiri and C2 Shilonin, 
The combination of excellent buffing, great sub DPS damage, and super fast rotation setup times, this makes it so that you'll be able to use Chiari and Shield on it together with pretty much any Geo, Pyro, Hydro, Electro, or Cryo DPS to excellent results, even ones that I didn't include in this video. And speaking of vertical investment, that is something very important to know about with Chiari, as to this day, she still has the highest cumulative damage increases in the entire game from her constellations and weapon. As we can see from the chart, taking Chiari from C0 to C1R1 results in about a 68% increase in damage, and that would be closer to 90% if her burst isn't being used. All of Chiari's constellations except C5 are huge increases to her damage. Your vertical investment priority with her should be C1 as this is her largest increase, unless you are primarily using her with a construct, then prioritize her weapon first instead. Once you have either Chiari C1, or her weapon, or even both, if you want to maximize her as a sub DPS, then going for C4 would be an excellent stopping point, as C4 is where her front loaded damage becomes really insane. The three dolls it creates are summoned only a second apart from each other, whereas the ones from C2 only come out every 3 seconds. So C4 is really where she is pretty much finalized as a sub DPS. But her C6 can also be really good even if you aren't using the normal attacks to make her a hyper carry. If you can swap to Cherry multiple times in the rotation, the reduced skill cooldown from C6 can allow her to get the damage from casting her skill, and the two hits of her A1 numerous times in a rotation for excellent quick swap damage. Recasting her skill also resets the attack intervals of Chiari's puppets, so depending on the timing, you can get a few extra hits from that as well. But for the most part, once you have C1 R1 Chiari, you'll want to then walk towards getting a C2 Shilon in. You can also prioritize C2 Shilon in before Chiari's constellations and weapons if desired. A great long-term go long goal to aim for if desired is C4 R1 Chiari and C2 Shilon in. Now moving on, let's briefly go over how to build Chiari. Her best artifact set is Husk of Opulent Dreams, but Golden Troop is not far behind at all. If you aren't using Chiari's burst every rotation, then Husk and Golden Troop are basically equal, so just use whichever set you have better stats on. But if you have a C6 Chiari and are using her normal attacks as a hyper carry, you'll want to ensure you are using Husk and not Troop. Main stats are straightforward. Defense Sands, Geo Goblet, and Crit Circlet. For substats, prioritize Crit, then Defense. Energy Recharge substats are fine, between 120 to 140 percent should be enough to burst every rotation, depending on the team. But if your Cherry, cherry isn't C2 yet, you can completely ignore Energy Recharge and just burst every other rotation, or skipping it entirely for faster rotations, which is ideal for some teams. And for Chiori's weapons, her signature, Uraku Misugiri, is always best by a large margin. But if you don't have it, then Shilonin's signature weapon, Peak Patrol Song, is going to be the next best. It's actually the next best for both her personal damage, and it also buffs the team's damage. So it can be better than Uraku for overall team damage on Chiori, but if you have Shilonin on the same team, then it won't make sense to put Chiori on this weapon. You'll just Put it on Shilonin while using Cherry on another weapon. And other weapons you can use are Jade Cutter, Wolf Fang, Miss Splitter, Harbinger of Dawn, Flame Breath Flute, or Cinnabar Spindle. And that covers pretty much everything. Overall, Cherry is a strong character, and a lot of teams that she works great in are with some of the best DPS units in the game, like Nuvalet, Moralani, Lenny, and Alicino. So Cherry is definitely a lot better than what she is currently perceived as by the community at large, and Shilonen made her a lot better, contrary to what many people seem to believe. If you found this video helpful at all, please be sure to give a like and subscribe and You can talk, you can talk to me. I can tell that you're not okay. You can spill your cards